It's a warm summer's day in Bencham, Gateshead, England. The year is 1940. Five-year-old Robert Hall and his friend were sitting on a wall in Saltwell Road, not far from his home. They were spending their spare time watching the soldiers marching off towards the front lines in Europe. At this time, England was currently in the midst of World War II. After a few hours of watching the marching troops, Robert and his friend decided to leave. They were both getting rather hungry. They set off in the direction of Headley Street, where Robert lived, with his mother, his father and his seven-year-old sister. Robert also had an older brother, who was serving in the army at the time, in Europe. On their way home, they decided to take a shortcut to an area known as Bottom Brick Lane. The lane ran adjacent to a row of terraced houses and exited near Robert's home. It was a lane that ran the length of the houses. It was also a place where the children enjoyed playing. Exiting the lane, Robert tells how they seemed to run into what appeared to be a shining invisible barrier. Behind this barrier, they could see multiple creatures, some very different from each other. There was also some kind of vehicle that Robert was unfamiliar with. Robert described how one of the creatures was very tall and very hairy. He said it looked like what we might describe as today a Bigfoot. Another of these creatures looked like it was wearing an oversized deep sea diving helmet. Robert also noticed that there were also smaller creatures, which today we might call greys. There was also one individual in the group that looked like a normal person, a tall, handsome, humanoid man with flowing blonde hair, wearing what appeared to be bright red robe. As Robert and his friends stood transfixed by what they were looking at, suddenly the man grabbed Robert and took him into the craft. Robert recalls that there was a group of small creatures outside of the craft, ranging from two feet to four feet in height. The blonde-haired humanoid man seemed to be taking blood from the back of Robert's neck. While the procedure was taking place, the man explained to Robert that he must move his head, because if he did, he would be killed instantly. After this procedure, Robert was taken back outside of the craft. The humanoid seemed pleased with the results. While all this was taking place, other children had arrived in the lane. They now could see the craft and started to panic. Some children tried to climb the fence onto the railway tracks. Others just panicked and screamed. In all this commotion, Robert was able to run away with some other children, running towards the local corner shop to get help. When Robert got to the corner shop, Robert told some soldiers what he had seen. He told the soldiers that there was an alien in the lane. Eventually, Robert was able to persuade one of the soldiers to come with him. As they entered the lane, the soldier, seeing what Robert had described, immediately unholstered his pistol and discharged it at the craft. This, of course, caused mass panic. People were now running everywhere. The craft left the scene, vanishing with all of its occupants. In fact, far too many occupants that would fit in what seemed to be a craft the size of a family-sized car. 
Robert told of his encounter to his parents and was told that he was not to talk about it any further. Some three days later, things got even more stranger. Robert's father asked him to go to the local corner shop and pick up a newspaper. While Robert was walking through the lane, out of nowhere appeared a grey creature. It made a beeline for Robert. Robert ran and screamed, and his screams were heard by his uncle, who came to his rescue. Robert's uncle was armed with a shovel, and upon seeing this bizarre creature, immediately battered it to death. It wasn't long before the local police sergeant arrived on the scene. Police sergeant and Robert's uncle placed the body of the creature into a coal sack and placed it into a nearby coal bunker. After the authorities were notified, the body was then taken to St Cuthbert's Church, located in Bencham Road, about half a mile away from the scene. The body was then stored for around three months in a cellar area underneath the church. After these events, a vehicle arrived in Roberts Road. Four unknown men exited the vehicle wearing white and carrying what Robert describes as small brown leather suitcases. They searched every house in Saltwell Road, ejecting their occupants while the searches were undertaken. It appears that they were looking for someone or something. It's also interesting to note that on the morning Robert and his friend were watching the marching soldiers, he recalls seeing a bright white light zigzagging in the morning sky. This was also witnessed by some Australian soldiers. For two days after Robert's encounter, he was very unwell. His eyes constantly watered and he suffered from incredibly painful headaches. A small triangle mark also appeared on his left cheek. This stayed with him until about the age of 13. Robert also experienced threats from who he believed were army officials, telling him not to talk about his experience. Robert was also interviewed by a high-ranking Air Force official. While being interviewed, Robert was shown a child spinning top and was asked, does the craft look like this? He also recalls, for some time after, he was followed to school each day by a man he didn't know. All those years ago, 1940, did Robert and his friend encounter occupants from another world? Was Robert experimented on? I'll leave you to decide. Until next time, thanks for listening.